All right. And it looks like we are live. Show me the money, Sergio. Show me the money. <laughs> yes, sir. How are you, Chris? Uh, I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. We have so many things to talk about. Um, <clears throat> let's see if we go into overtime or not today. All uh, right. Yeah. We have, we have quite a bit to get through today, which is going to be yeah. great. So uh, first off, just want to say welcome to everybody watching. This is the Show Me the Money Club with myself, Chris, and Sergio, uh, my cohort, co-host, and fellow Uber and Lyft driver. We got a lot to talk about on the docket. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Uber's Go Get 2022. If you're not familiar with that, we're going to do a quick breakdown on that, a uh, quick rundown. Uh, we're going to be talking about a couple other things going on within Uber and Lyft's arena, ride share wars, all that crazy stuff. Uh, again, this is a live show. Uh, for anybody who is not watching the live and following uh, after the show, make sure you're subscribed, follow uh, us, and ring the bell for notifications with all notifications so you'll know when we go live. You can hop in the chat, hang out, share your thoughts and opinions, ask your questions, and we can uh, have a little bit more people watching, too, on top of that. So uh, first off, just want to say welcome to everybody. And it uh, looks like we're live. looks like everything's good. So uh, where do you want to start with? Um, well, first of all, did you mention the thumbs up, by the way? The likes? Is that the Oh, likes, smash right? that like button. <laughs> smash that like button. I mean, smash it as much as you want um chris you're really getting good at the intro man really i mean uh, i mean you know it's like i don't know which one of us is johnny carson but, but for the people who, who know who they are uh but uh, honestly i think we're getting really good at this and the other thing is we're getting really good response actually on the show and a lot of people are tuning in maybe you know they're feeling like we're we're part of the community as opposed to just cutting and pasting and doing some fluff right so, you know, we feel what they feel when they're on the front lines as well as you do. So being on the front lines, I think, gravitates really well with, with all the viewers and um, the readers of the blog. So uh, let's start with who's winning the ride share wars in L.A. So I said this a million times, please, people, please don't hammer me on this. Oh, yeah, you can make 50 bucks an hour because you're in L.A. I said it already. I said it a million times. I am in L.A. at the moment. When I go out and drive, I can make 40, 50 bucks easy. So the other thing is we had discussed uh, last week towards the end, or actually maybe the whole episode we discussed it, why I don't drive for Lyft, right? You asked me that question. And the main reason was that I don't know where I'm going. They don't show me the destination. So we did a video about that that got like tons of views. But besides that, even if they showed me the destination, there is a monetary you know, purpose behind when I'm driving. I'm not just driving because I'm public servant. I'm trying to make the most amount of money in the least amount of time, right? So let's put up that screenshots that I took. This is, by the way, as of last Friday morning rush hour in LA. All right, here is the show me the money. On the left, we have Lyft with their piddly three, four dollar surge. I'm in the Marina Del Rey for anybody who knows LA, very busy Santa Monica. Marina Del Rey area, and I'm in no surge whatsoever, but they have offered me a $15 streak for three rides. On the right, by the way, these two screenshots have been taken simultaneously within a minute of each other, so don't anybody say it's Photoshopped or anything like that. Do you guys see where my pin is? My pin is exactly at the same place on both apps, on both driver apps. I am sitting right under a $23 surge, and a little bit north of me is a $40 surge, a little west of me is about $32. And you guys see that little outline area, that's the boost zone. There's a three and a half dollar boost between seven and 8 a.m. Why in on earth would I drive for Lyft? Even if they had shown me the destination, which Uber does, and you guys see it on that screenshot, I have upfront destination because it shows seven out of 10, I had accepted it. So why would anybody in their right mind drive for Lyft? And that's why Uber is winning the ride share wars in LA, period. Yeah, and funny story, in my market, it's the opposite. So I was showing you screenshots when we were chatting through text of the last week or so. And for me, when I go out, there's no surge on Uber. The whole city of Buffalo is lighted up that gray that says, oh, there's more demand and you know it's fewer wait time if you're in that, the whole city of Buffalo, zero surge on Uber's side. On Lyft's side, 
there's more surge. I mean, granted, it's like two to six dollars, but still, that's where the surge is. So, uh, you know, when I went out, I went on Ubers because they were giving me the promotion. Yeah. Uh, so I did the promotion. Oh, let's talk, talk about I, that promotion, that the five four two hundred. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. you know, we 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 <laughs> went, we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago uh, on one of the live streams. When you take off for a couple of weeks, they tend to want to get you back. Yeah. And so you can get the five rides for $200 in my market. I oh. gave five rides in an hour and a half and you made $200. I ended up giving, uh, you know, I was out for later in the night just because it was busy. It was a Wednesday night too. So it was uh, pretty crazy, but I ended up making $261 in two and a half hours time. So I, designate, that's... I designate you the honorary chairman of the Show Me the Money Club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, think about that, right? Five rides, five shorties, couple hundred bucks, an hour and a half later, right? That's how you yep. do it. You, you hit it around, you take their money. And what Chris said, by the way, you know, those gray clouds that you guys see where it says with a little, uh, uh, it's like, a, I don't know, what is that? It's like a little sign on top of it that says, oh, yeah, this is really busy here. It's can like a you, little graph. Yeah, up. yeah. <laughs> can you spell the word suppression? <laughs> Suppress the surge, baby. We cannot give all these mm -hmm. bonuses and the surge on top because these drivers are going to be swimming in money. So let's suppress it through our algorithms or whatever we need to do. We can't just show them all the money. We have to show us some of the money some of the time. But yeah. Chris, Chris took the and money. Then going on top of that, beyond, then you have another... You have your, your two, two weekly costs. So the one that I had was the five for 200. That comes, you know, every, it depends on how often I take off. So like I did, I took, I was driving and then took off a couple of weeks and then got that one again. Uh, so I'm like, all right, we're going to do it. And then they had $120. If you gave, I think it was, um, I think I, it was the, the 40 ride. Um, yeah plus plus 10 or something i yeah. i can't remember there because there, you get all the different surges so yeah. on top of that it's like you you got to go where the money is so even though sure i might see more surge on lyft side versus uber yeah. uber is the one who's paying out the promotions why would i not drive for uber because they're the ones who are paying out the promotions Absolutely. i'm not seeing any promotions on lyft side only yeah. on ubers but then it's the switch where you got the the surge on the one versus yeah. the other. Yeah. Well, on top of that, by the way, you know, this is after that earnings debacle that we discussed about their <laughs> stocks, right? Yeah. And and Lyft, and Lyft during the conference call that said, oh, we're going to show the drivers a ton of money. We need to get him back. You know what? This week they cut my, they cut everything that they offered me. I'm like, where's the money, Lyft? Come on, mm -hmm. John Zimmer. You know, if you're watching this, I have a great idea for you coming up, by the way, John Zimmer. Check it out. Oh, yeah, we're going to be know? talking about that in just a oh, minute. Oh, yeah, in a minute. Yeah, but I saw the the, the, the um, comments so, uh, from Mohamed Salah. Mo I, are, you the, are you the Mohamed Salah that plays for Liverpool, by the way? If you're here, you're in the – why are you here? You make like $600,000 a week. Um, <laughs> that's an inside joke. Soccer people, football people, more like it, European football, they will know that. So he says, I do Uber full-time, and I'm really worried about getting deactivated. You are at the right place. Just hang on for another 10 minutes. I'm going to tell you guys my story of the activation with the pink mustache and what I had to go through to stay on the platform. Okay, people, seriously, as an independent contractor, you don't treat your employees this way. If you did, there'll be like a labor lawsuit on top of your head. But the way they treat us is ridiculous. So, um, you know, let's talk about the, the, the stock situation, right, for 10, maybe 10, 20 seconds. So we discussed this on the last episode. Earnings came out. It was a disaster. Lift stock crashed 30%. So now, you know, I, I, right then and there, I had this thought. And then the next day, Uber showed up. Their stock crashed another 20%. These things are down 60, 70, 80% from their IPO levels and all-time highs. I'm going like, okay, you know, they're telling a story and nobody, including Wall Street, is buying the story. So because, you know, on Wall Street, there's a saying, scoreboard. Scoreboard is your stock price. If institutions and retail investors think you're doing well they will buy it's you know trading stock is like potatoes and tomatoes it's a supply and demand thing if there is a lot of demand stock price will go up don't make it complicated if there is a lot of supply meaning sellers stock will go down so i thought about this what do you think about this chris i want to run this by you how about not that the stocks are so depressed right 
instead of quests and all this bogus mumbo jumbo bs that they offer with the carrot and the stick and if you do 50 rides i'll give you an extra 200 but on the 48th i'm going to throttle the crap out of you so you're never going to get to 50 or at least half of the ants are not going to get to 50. i'm like okay how about this instead of offering cash for quests right how about uber and lyft offered stock look you know let's do this let's do you do 50 rides for me uber says and i'll give you eight shares of uber stock in your brokerage account i'll transfer it it's easily done it's really done i researched it it's not a hard situation because all their executives have stock options right so it you know transfer me eight shares at 23 bucks that's 200 bucks right there so what are you creating as a company you're creating some sort of loyalty if as a driver you want to make me loyal Give me something that I can participate in your future growth with, as opposed to just take the 200 and disappear. Or I'm going to throttle you, you're never going to get to 200 anyway. What do you think about this? And same thing for Lyft, by the way. Stocks are depressed. Maybe we should, you know, maybe we should believe what their executives are saying. Everything is wonderful. Don't look at the stock price. Stock price will take care of itself. So then give us some stock instead of quests or boosts or all this garbage that we're dealing with, right? Leave the surge alone. Give me stock. I'll take it at 23 bucks. Okay. That, that's an interesting idea. Uh, first, first couple of things, how much, how much no total stock. stocks do they no have stock. issued? Mil how many billion. A billion. Okay. 2.2 2 billion. How much is outstanding? 2.2 yeah, billion. How much is outstanding that's able to be bought without, um, you know, any issues? And then think if you have all these drivers, all of a sudden getting a bunch of stock, mm -hmm. do you have to, or how, how quick will that outstanding stock shrink up to the point where now you have no outstanding stock um and then you have to create more dilute it i mean th there's a lot of issues there when it comes to it because i mean think about it you it, how many millions of drivers do you have on the platform uh -huh. and how many people would actually fall under to that where they would get stock so right. i could see that being an option maybe like they have the ability to say hey i want you know x amount of percent in stock paid but you know what? When it comes down to it, I don't want quests. I don't want pr bonuses. I don't want any of these promotions. What I want, show me the money. Okay. Increase the time and mileage rates to something that's going to be much better. Don't give me that that carrot and the stick. Say, oh, if you give okay. you know that fifty rides and you you get to that two that two last one where they okay. two hours, just increase the rates for both time and mileage. Give me oh. cash. Or give me the option to say, I want to have X amount of percent in stock. So let's say I make $100 uh, or $1,000. 10% 10 of your income in stock. How about that? That's yeah, if you, want to do, if you want to do that and you want to opt into that, sure, yeah. you could yeah. do that. But then you also have the ability to, uh, you know, say, I don't want to do that for this week or, you know, kind of switch around. So, you know, if something's going to come right. up where maybe the stock market isn't doing okay. well, Okay. Uh, and the other thing, too, is a lot of people don't have the understanding when it comes to stocks. So, yeah, you might have stocks, but what happens when they want the money or something like that? So uh, like there's got to be a lot more involved, too, when it comes to it, which I understand, though. It's it's a good idea, uh, but there's some things. So, uh, but yeah, I, when it comes I, to I, it, I, show I, up, cash you know is what? king. The, you know, the mechanicals probably need some work, but um, as far as because, you know, we know this, right? We know this, that you cannot build multi-billion dollar global empires on the backs of migrating side hustlers okay this is pretty evident now because something happens they, the pandemic happens they, they go short of drivers gas prices go up they're short of drivers what else comes up they're short of drivers so there is no loyalty on the driver base right and without drivers there is no gig economy so my thing is how do i attract to drivers look onboarding drivers is easy retaining them has proven to be an impossible task over the last 12 years so to me you onboard it you spend billions of dollars in marketing but then you can't retain them what good is that you just threw the money into the air you know what i'm saying so coming back to your point yeah that would be a wonderful idea that if they go back to the rates in 2016 when it was buck 45 and 45 cents a minute nobody mm -hmm. would quit nobody would quit honest to god and forget all this bonus and quest and bullshit. nobody would quit just like they did in Washington state, right? The legislator got involved. Now those people are getting paid like buck 35 a mile and uh, something like 40 cents a minute or 38 cents a minute. 
to mm -hmm. me, it's like, I don't think that's the trend though. You see, the trend is your friend. Rates have been the same lousy 60 cents a mile and 21 cents a minute in LA since 2019, while everything we pay for has gone up 200%. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if they were going to do that, they probably would have done that. If they could, probably, they probably cut it again, right? <laughs> but at 60 cents, I don't know how much blood is left in the in the rock. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes when it comes to the though, like loyalty, drivers are going to go where the money is. I mean, we pr proved it earlier when you said Lyft versus Uber with the surge with those heat maps. Why would anyone drive for Lyft when yeah. you don't have the surge map like you had when it was when it was the the Uber side? Like that's the whole thing. So for the majority of drivers, you're on both platforms. You know, yeah. if if you're not, sign up for the other one. Uh, link yeah. is going to be, you know, in, in the channel. Go to the rideshareguy.com. Um, sign up. But the whole thing is, you should be on both apps, and you should take whatever promotion is going to be better for you at the time that you're online. So if it's for the week, if it's for the the few days, if it's you know in the moment, whether it's surge or uh, you know, either side, but that's the yeah. whole thing. You're going to go where the money is. And if you're not working out the money or you're giving these quests, 70 rides and 70 plus 10 for a promotion, you know, a lot of drivers aren't going to do that. Even Lyft. I saw somebody post something where they had 104 rides, uh, on, on their first tier. I think it was like 23, the second, and then like 42 for the third. So, oh you know, God. you're giving a ton of rides yeah, and crazy. granted they're for the week versus uh ubers which is split into two um which you can get yeah. into a whole different topic there yeah but well I, again I think, if you, know, you want to create some sort of loyalty yeah you're gonna have to to fork out the money in order to get drivers to be on your platform i mean yeah you could do other things like points or you oh, know yeah. whatever it might uh, be but those, those are points. jokes points uh, don't pay the money Point, point, exactly. Points don't pay the bills, number one. So, Mr. Zimmer, if you're watching this, you know, get rid of that gamified point system or whatever it is. I don't even look at it because I don't drive mm -hmm. enough of it to look at it. Um, the other thing is, you know, when do you think these executives will figure this out? Or have they already figured it out? Deep down, they know that the model that they have, which is build a business on the backs of, you know, side hustlers, because that's how they sold it, sold the idea. Hey, put your side hustle on. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put my side hustle on this week for you. And next week, I'm going to do it for DoorDash. And next week, I'm going to do it for Lyft. So to me, how is it that these people haven't figured this out yet? That side hustlers cannot be dependable. It's not a labor force that you can depend on to be there when you want them to be there. You know what I mean? Maybe they know it, but they're just not admitting it. They continue with the marketing you know, let's churn and burn as much as we can. Yeah, but we're going to spend half a billion dollars in marketing to onboard new fresh blood. I'm like, good luck with that one. That hasn't worked the last decade. So who knows if it's going to work next decade, if they're still around, by the way. <clears throat> Uber Boost Plus one went from nine, but yes, Vanessa, especially in LA, I was at 11. There were some days there were 18. Of course, just like anything else, they start high. And then they try to wean you off and then they go down to buck and a half. They think if you work for 11 per ride or nine in your case, yeah, they're dumb enough. They're going to work for a buck and a half. No, we are not. You know what I'm saying? It's just not going to happen. I'm not taking my car out of the garage for a buck and a half boost. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. No, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, but that kind of goes into one of the other topics that we were yes. going to talk about and that is you know should these executives should these coders should all the employees and you know the whole team for uber lyft or dash whatever platform it is should they be required you know on a regular basis to actually go out and either deliver or drive whatever it might be for a platform so doordash yes. you got to go out and deliver they have that set up but should this be on all platforms and how often should they just to create or just to stop this disconnect from happening? Because yeah, that's the other it. thing. Yeah, you know, I know. Points, I ain't yeah. getting paid. I'm not, I, I don't care. I'm not going on, on your platform if I'm getting points. That ain't can you paid. go to the supermarket with points? <laughs> can, you go to, can you go to, can you go to like Ralph's in my area 
And then imagine the cashier's face. I show up my app. I go, look, I got 8,000 lift points. Are they not good for a loaf of bread here? Uh, no, no, sir. I need cash <laughs> for security. Please escort this gentleman out of the door. I'm like, bro, <laughs> what are points? Who is going to fall for that stuff, right? I mean, to me, it's like ridiculous. But when you mention, you know, executives, right? So I wrote this article about a month and a half ago. It got like so much traction that I go, we should talk about this. Let's see what the viewers think. Here's my point. You can write all the algorithms, all the code in the world, and they're all done by humans so far, you know, although, you know, AI is kind of taking over that space as well. So watch out coders. What they do is they write the code and they unleash it on the driver base, 2 million, 3 million drivers or delivery people in the country, right? Now, I am sure they back test some of this stuff, what the reaction may be like to the new algorithm, to whatever it is. Then they go, oh, this didn't work. Let's just change the algorithm and just throw something else to the drivers. And we're like, we're like the, the wheels on the mouse. I'm like, uh, no, this is not working. So here's my point. How about this? How about every employee at DoorDash, at Instacart, at that, that, that includes the C-suite, DK, if you're watching. I saw that video. I saw it on Twitter when you put your little hat on and delivered like eight deliveries of food. That's not doing delivery, my man, with your like $2 million security uh, detail in the back. That's not doing delivery. So how about this? Execs all the way down. Every six months. I'm not asking for much. Every six months for one week. Just one week. They do delivery, um, grocery delivery, food delivery, or ride share. Just to taste some of their own medicine and say, you know what? Maybe this is really not going to work out. These people are, we're just putting these people under extreme amounts of pressure with these algorithms. You know, a lot of people say, I love this gig because there is no boss watching over me, right? Breaking news, they're watching you 24 hours a day. Algorithm is anyway. Even your deactivations depend on algorithms. It doesn't go to a human committee. When Uber says within three minutes of a capacitor complaining, deactivated off the face of the earth. I'm like, yeah, we'll talk about that in about the next, next segment. So to me, it's like every one of these people should get in and drive and feel the pain and at least feel what the drivers are experiencing, right? As opposed to just saying, we'll churn and burn them and we'll get new ones in. You know, it will create so much credibility and loyalty on the driver base. It would mean a lot to me if executives or coders get out there and drive. All they do, Chris, is they write these algorithms, they throw it out, they enjoy it themselves, by the way, as a consumer, order a ride, order food, order groceries, right? But they never go out and do it. And if they did, maybe the disconnect between the drivers and themselves will not be this wide, right? So that's the only way to narrow it. Go out and, you know, experience your stuff. Let's see, let's see if the driver's complaints are factual or they're just making things up, right? Yeah, I think that that would be a good thing for the entire, uh, entire company to have to be able to do something like that. I mean, obviously, certain positions I don't think really need to if they're not really towards, say, um, certain things when it comes to the drivers, if it's more geared towards, you know, something else within the company. Sure, you don't need to. But when it comes to dealing with the product, dealing with the driver, yeah, you probably should be out there. And then all execs should be out there uh, testing it out. And then, you know, something for like Uber, because they offer so much, you know, you got Uber Eats, Uber Connect, Uber uh, Rideshare, you got all these different ones, then that one, uh, they should have to cycle through. So, you know, each person does one and then the next and then the next, and then they're kind of, you know, scheduled at a certain time or something or have to fulfill certain requirements. Something like that. Yeah, that would be great. Do yeah. I think it's going to really make a change, though? Uh, you know what? I, 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 I'll, I don't know, you know, because I'm asking for one week execs and coders go get a car get in your car you know just okay just forget the rest just do just drive people around for a week don't do drunk hours just a few hours a day any time of the day you desire okay get in your cars get some unruly passengers in your car and then you'll know 
wait a minute, man, what we're doing to these drivers, that's why they're quitting. You know, what's the number? I mean, Uber says this themselves, I'm sure it's higher, 60, 70%, right? Quit in less than a year doing ride share. Why is that? Why is such a churn and burn? Because the drivers are begging for some sort of consistency out there. As if it wasn't bad enough that the, the apps are gamified and there is massive variability, right? In week to week, what you get as a quest or what you get as a boost this week, you get this week. So there's no consistency. If you got out there under the same circumstances as a driver on the front lines and experience what we're experiencing, maybe, you know, there will be more consistency because otherwise enjoying your own product as a consumer is not good enough. Yeah. You push a button, the car shows up, but under what circumstances does that happen? You have to know what kind of traffic the drivers are dealing with, what kind of people, you know, what kind of drunks they're dealing with, you know, at three in the morning, right? What kind of people throw up in their cars? So to me, I think it would create so much credibility on the driver community that if a CEO or a CFO or a, you know, executive of a company gets out there and drives and experiences without, you know, I mean, what's a week, man? What's a week of your life, right? If it's going to make some change, some positive change in this gig, I think I'm all for it. Will they do it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know DoorDash has their their thing going, and I know uh, for the pandemic, they kind of suspended that for the time being, yeah. but now they're restarting it, and some of the employees were going off, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, that's kind of your business. That's that's your job. You should kind of know what it's all about. Uh, so oh, I don't you're know. Talking I about, mean, you're talking about that coder that was complaining and put it on some website that, oh, I didn't get hired for this. No, sir, you got hired for this. Yeah. If you're watching, I'm sure you're not, but that dude, yeah. And then a lot of he got a lot of pushback from his own, you know, employee base and friends. Mm -hmm. And then they said yeah. that no, I think that would be a wonderful idea. Yeah, <laughs> sir. You with two hundred thousand dollar a year salary, you know, spare us a week of your life and get out there and see, you know experience your own code. Let's see how it goes, right? No, of course, you know they go like they're on they're on this pedestal, you know, they put themselves on, they go, no, I am not going to do it. I am a software engineer. I'm not a food delivery guy. I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. okay, well, that's why you're experiencing what you're experiencing. So, yep. Well, I think that kind of, I think that kind of rolls into our next topic too, of, uh, you mm. know, with so many people and negative comments and, you know, talking smack about these companies and yet they're still out there. Yes. <laughs> why people so look at this right so why yeah why? yeah you tell me why okay you you know look i i i'm known as a pounder of these companies and harry has known this from the first day he met me but i'm i i just want a counter argument when it comes to that okay so every time i go on rs like the last two videos we put up right you got like 300 comments which is like ridiculous amount for rsg i i I don't think there was one positive. I read all of them. I'm a newbie to the YouTube world, right? So as an idiot, I went and read all of them. Guess what? There was not one person that says, I love this stuff. I can't have enough of Uber and Lyft. I didn't, I didn't see one. They were all F Uber, F Lyft. They're horrible. They're evil. They're this, they're that, right? And then at the end of the day, there's two and a half million of drivers and delivery people out there still. So why are you doing it, Chris? I'm doing it just for shits and giggles, <laughs> making making 500 bucks a weekend and put it in my daughter's college fund. That's why I'm doing it. I'm telling you, <laughs> and I only do it when I can make 50 bucks an hour. Otherwise, good luck. So why are people still, is it desperation, right? They have to put food on the table. Is it that? Is it Stockholm syndrome? You know what Stockholm syndrome is, right? So they take you hostage. <laughs> you hate your you hate your uh, captor for about a month or two, and then you fall in love with your captor. Is it Stockholm syndrome, people? Are you all in love with Uber and Lyft, but you don't even know it? it? That could be one. Otherwise, if you're complaining so much, go get a W two job. There is there is what is that the, the the resignation going on all over the country? There is millions of jobs available. Why are people still doing this? So you tell me, I don't know. I've been thinking about this a long time, as you can tell. <laughs> I think everybody's got their, their reasons why. And, you know, 
you know, it, it's kind of funny because I was thinking about this earlier today, not, not this specific topic, but it ties in completely. And that is why do we always focus on negative things, but we don't ever really take account for the positive things. Mm-hmm. And th- I, you've probably seen this. Other people probably seen this. There's a meme that that's out there and it's, it's actually like a more of a lesson. And it was a math teacher who goes up, puts on the board, you know, one plus nine or one times nine equals nine Two it goes all the way down. So it's uh-huh. one, one times nine, two times nine, three times nine, all the way down to the bottom. Uh-huh. And then it was nine times 10 and he made the mistake there. And then the kids laughed and he's like, why are you laughing? Cause he's like, you got one wrong. You, you, you messed up. You're the teacher. You're supposed <laughs> to know better. But he's like, yeah, you, you're, you're telling me I got one wrong, but I got nine, right. And it's uh-huh. kind of like the same thing. You know, we all focus on the negative things cause it's easy to complain instead of yeah. saying what's good now. Yeah. You can argue that Uber and Lyft aren't really that great. They're in it for the, for their money. They, they, they're not really caring about the drivers. They've shown that over and over, whatever it is. Yeah. Those are the complaints again. But when it comes down to it, what is it doing for you? And are you, you know, able to sustain enough? You do it for your daughter, for her college fund. You know, you try getting out there. For me, it started because I was going to a different area. So I was, like I said, I was in Charlotte when I first started. So it was a good way for me to go in there, make money and still survive. Uh, Then when I went to Buffalo, you know, this is where I'm from is Buffalo. And so when I was there, it, it was, it was something cause I enjoyed doing it. I could go online when I want. I, yeah, I like the flexibility. Could the pay be better? Absolutely. Yeah. And if I have one complaint about Uber or Lyft, it is the pay rates. Uh, if they increased it, you know, X amount, I think you would probably get rid of 70, 80% of the complaints just by increasing rates. Uh, if you did it smartly too, where it's not going to be, you know, hurting the company itself because obviously they have a, a fiduciary duty to their shareholders, which means they're going to try to do what they can. So why can't they increase the rates, increase sure. the pay rates, and then you know you're still getting the profits that you need to, and then being smarter internally how you use your money, how you burn your money and all that. You know, yeah. doing something like that, you're, you're going to make a lot of people more happy. Uh, and I think that's where my complaint is. It's like, that's why I only, only do it, you know, part-time. I'm not doing it a lot. Yeah. And I've also included, you know, you know now Spark onto the program. Uh, so Spark is offering great incentives when I'm out driving. And, yeah. you know, those are just added bonuses to tie up time and get paid for it. So yeah. uh, that is, you know, another benefit. Um, but yeah, it's, I think that you got to oh. kind of step back and be like, okay, well, what's good? And I think people do it. Probably another reason is, you know, they get stuck in this, this rut and, you know, they're probably not happy in their lives in general. And it's like, you got to take a hard, you got to, you got to do a hard shift and a hard, you know, internal search at your own life and see, am I walking the right path or should I change my path into something else? And yeah, you could probably use Uber and Lyft for the time being, whether that's going back to school, whether that's, you know, learning, going on YouTube and learning different, different avenues of of thought and, and stuff like that when it comes to, to maybe a something that you want to do or following your dreams. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people don't do that. So they get stuck in this, this complete, you know, cycle, you could call it like a hamster wheel. You're just, you're running and running and running, but you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people do make money doing this gig. Mm -hmm. I I hope and pray to God that everybody saves the money because uh, honestly, going out blowing the stack, if you make three grand a week, great. Like what's the, we zoom says, I do it for the dollars. Wonderful. Last three months, average 11 K a month. Hey, that goes with my article yesterday who Facebook people pounded me on. Thanks Harry for posting that. Can an Uber and Lyft driver make hundred thousand dollars a year? That was the article. I broke it down. I said, it wouldn't be me, but it would be a 25 year old stud who can easily make two grand a week in LA today. For sure. No problem. This guy is better He goes, I do it. $4 last three months, average 11,000 a month, 70 plus hours driving. 
You may be the stud that I was talking about, we zoom, because that's crazy money right there. So take the expenses out. Hope you're driving in an EV or some beat up Prius or whatever it is. Then we know the expenses are there. Eleven, you didn't make eleven thousand. That's eleven thousand gross we zoom. But uh ah, here's a good, there's a I love driving four wheel. I'm making more than ever. Yes. There you go. I drive LA. Hey, we zoom. We got to meet. I'm in LA myself. I doubt you can beat me. Are you driving some black? Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's driving a Tesla. Why, bro? Okay. <laughs> All right. I got you. You got the tips rolling. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you know. better be there. <laughs> yeah, it better be there because that Tesla Y ain't cheap. Um, although, you know, depreciation is less on those cars. Um, yes, I did. I made 100K last year, but expenses in Texas came up to 30K profit. Huh? You netted 30k out of the 100k. Wow. Or well, expenses, if you take if you if you take 30 30 percent for taxes, you're down to you know around 70. And then I mean, I don't know how you're doing 40,000 in in expenses, expenses but with an electric car, bro. Come is on. Is that the, my question though? Is is that something where it would be um, you're taking into account? all of your 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 livelihood your your like spending Probably. limit is 40,000 or Probably. is and you're 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 actually putting away 30,000 i mean yeah, that's <laughs> that's or, or is that 30,000 going towards weird. bills <laughs> yeah that's kind of vague william so you know we'll clarify that if you want to clarify that but to me it's like you know negative sales right everybody because you know you watch all this stuff everybody complains everybody complains and on the other side you know people are making money look at this guy i made 109,000 Hey, Harry, are you watching still? We have all these drivers who are making 100K plus, and I was resistant to writing that article. Harry says, can you write, you do an article with math explaining that you could, could you really make like 100K? I go easily. In LA right now, you could easily make 100K a year if everything stayed exactly the way it was. If there was surge, maybe 16 out of the 24 hours, you know, decent bonuses. You're on Uber's good side. They show you destination, all that good stuff. Yeah, you probably could make 100 grand. Can I? No. I can't drive 60 hours a week or let alone 50. But when I get out, I make 50 bucks an hour. So to me, it's like, uh, I'll take the money. 109,000 cleared 44K in Chicago. 65,000 in expenses, bro? What are these people driving? Are you driving like <laughs> in fees? What fees? You're talking about, yeah, what, what fee? You like, about? you're talking about like, gross pay of uber and then what they're taking no forget about that i don't i don't know about yeah. yeah i don't know about that either so we're you know we have mass mass problems here so if you're making hundred k please respond to my article and show a screenshot you know who knows i think hundred k is, is doable in la in other places maybe not probably not but hundred k is doable if you drive a 10 year old prius i put all the math in there by the way for ev prius whatever right I think your expenses with a 10 year old Prius is going to run max. Your gas expenses is about 550 bucks a month. Depreciation is already out of the window. Wear and tear is gone. So yeah, you'll probably clear 80K. That's just that, not living expenses, none of that stuff. 30K is after all my expenses, like two car, two X car payments, insurance, gas payments. So you saved 30K. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yep. That's, that's, I good there. love that deal right there. So save that 30K. Don't go blow on like, you know, on some Vegas or some stuff or some party. Keep the money. Another two years like that, 100K saved, all taxes paid. Go open your own business. Do something else with it. Because you can't keep making 100K a year in ride share. You just can't. You'll wear out. Mm -hmm. You'll die. You'll die. Or you'll <laughs> kill somebody, one or the other. So when it comes to killing somebody, which I came close to, we could maybe switch to the, to me, the most important topic. Um, you know, there is a, there is a Matt, Max has a good problem. comment, which I think we'll, we'll save that for a different show. How do you make um, person? I want to know, teach me. I love to learn from the experts. Hey, you know what, if you're in LA or actually for everybody who's on the chat or watching right now, any questions and I do answer them, maybe not right away, maybe within 48 hours, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. Shoot me an email. I'll get back to you. Any questions. Okay. Seattle, I'm making 147k. Huh? <laughs> uh, okay. You see, this may this may be just what exactly the Uber execs were looking for. 
People are making 150k a year. You people are complaining. What are you guys complaining about? <laughs> oh, like, Why are you complaining? <laughs> if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year doing rideshare, you shouldn't be complaining. <laughs> yeah, you should absolutely not be complaining, especially 147k probably doing black or whatever he's doing. I'm like, bro, that's like stupid money. Come on now. I don't know unless you're driving hundred dollars a week. But uh, you, you know, there are winners out there in this game. There are losers out there in this game. Just when I mm -hmm. say I make 50 bucks in LA. Man, I've been doing this for six, seven years. I know every nook and cranny of the city. I know exactly where surge is going to be before it happens. So to me, you have to learn. The learning you know, curve is pretty steep, but you have to adjust. You have to learn. You have to adapt. You may change your hours, whatever it is. But it's doable. Right now, in LA, 50 bucks an hour is doable on a part-time mm. basis. Although in the article, I came up with 65 hours out of the 168 that you have in a week that you could absolutely kill it on search no doubt i researched it before i wrote it i don't put bs on there there are 168 hours a week 65 of it is surging like it's christmas eve or new year's eve more like it okay so it's doable at the moment is it for 12 months straight i don't know one two three months you can do it yeah okay great but we have a lot of people who are making 120, 50K a year driving yep. Uber. <laughs> In what planet, people? The coders probably are not making that much money. So let's not complain. <laughs> anyway. So Yeah, I think uh, I think Max will have we'll have to write that down for another another topic for another show. That, that would be a good one to dive right. into. Yeah. Um and, yeah, and let's... the profitability matrix, you know. I make 50 bucks gross. Yep. Okay. Not net. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, and then let's uh, let's get into another article that you were talking about, and yeah. that is the uh, the Lyft pinky swear, yes. and how Lyft was, you know, threatening to deactivate you yeah. when it came to following their own policy. Hundred percent. So, so let me set this up for thirty seconds. Uh, I live in the suburbs of LA, a place called Granada Hills. There aren't too many early AM rides to LAX from there. There are plenty from the city. So what do I do? I go to the Lyft schedule rides. Uh, there are plenty of people going there. So Lyft schedule rides, by the way, is one and only one thing that they're superior to Uber in. One. That's it. Okay. Dependable. Not too many cancellations. Actually, no cancellations the last six years for me. So I'll pick a schedule ride at 5 a.m., 5.30 before the 4 or 5 freeway. Whoever's in L.A. knows this. It becomes a parking lot. You know, I'll be in the center of the city at LAX when the surge is going to start at 7 a.m. on Uber. And I combine that. It's, by the way, from my house to LAX is a $35 ride on base without surge on Lyft. I'll pick up my schedule ride, go there. In this On this occasion, Lyft also had offered me 3418. So I make sure that first ride is first ride of the 3418 streak, right? And then once I'm in the city, rides are galore. So I'll just set my DF and do a couple more quickie shorties on Lyft. And that's 30 plus 18 plus another 10, probably 10 to 12. If I catch some surge, catch some surge. But that's like 60 bucks, 65 bucks in a, at most an hour and a half. That's for Lyft, that's good money. So sure enough, one of those days, I pick it up. My, I pick up my passenger, drop off at LAX, go to my second ride. I'm on my third ride. I get this ping. Um, I said, great, I'm about to finish my streak. I'm going to get my 60 bucks, turn the Uber app on and kill the surge and go home. I'm like, okay. So uh, the passenger is literally two minutes away. It's six in the morning, still dark. This is happening like two months ago. Um, and then I get to the curb and not in a bad part of the town at all. Marina del Reish, let's give it that. Uh, <laughs> I have this. 23, 25-year-old girl, maybe max 25, stumbling, this is no joke, stumbling towards my car with a bunch of grocery bags, holding a bunch of grocery bags, right? So I have a policy, if it's dark or at night drunk hours, I will not unlock my door until I confirm, which everybody should do, who the passenger is. I put my driver, I mean, passenger window down halfway. Just when I was about to ask her, who she was, because I'm assuming she's my passenger, I don't know. She starts cussing at me. Every name in the book. You mf -er, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're coming the wrong way. You're doing this. You're not helping me with my bags. I'm like, oh, shit. 
this is going to go sideways real fast. I put my window up a little bit more. Right when I do that, one of the bags breaks, the handle. There is tomatoes, potatoes all over the floor now. Not in my car. Right then and there, I decided that this woman is not getting in my car. But then I'm thinking, okay, shit, it's my 3, 4, 18 streak. It's my last ride. There goes my 18 bucks, right? Then I get, you know, and then she starts cussing at me some more. I go, push the arrive button, cancel the ride. You see my tailpipes, young lady. I'm not going to call her names, but I'm sure she was involved in some sort of illegal, uh, you know, puff puff or whatever it was. So to me, I'm like, done. There goes my 18. I go get a cup of coffee. I'm chill. On the screenshots, if the times are there, long story short, within six minutes, not longer, six minutes, I get this email from Lyft saying, accusing me of these three things. So next slide, Chris, let's see it. That one. It says, hi, Sergio. It says cancellations too often, canceling too often. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't do enough rides to cancel. The next one, not driving towards your passenger. Lift. If on the third leg of the street, you don't send me a ride that's 14 miles away in the middle of Santa Monica, where there is billion rides that are closer to me, I would love to pinky swear. Pinky swear, I would love to drive towards the destination, pick up point. And the third one is asking passengers to cancel. Never done it, ever. Once I accept, I'm going to do it unless... A crackhead like that is trying to get in my car or, or whatever. So I'm like, okay. So now it says you're at the risk of deactivation. I'm like, why am I? I don't, I don't cancel. And then I look at, I look, these are all the screenshots from my app. These are not doctored. It says my cancellation rate on the right screenshot. It says avoid canceling rides or asking passengers to cancel, which I never do and never done. It says I'm at 5% cancellation rate. And I'm at the risk of deactivation because of 5%. I'm like, oh, man, that, that must be the threshold. I'm like a five-star driver with, I think, close to 1,200 rides on Lyft. I'm like, okay. So now I'm going like, how do I keep staying on this wonderful platform of yours, right? And then what they do, they said, you have to go to cancellation rehab school, Sergio. I'm like, huh? I made that up, by the way. There is no rehab school, but there is a school that they push you through on the app, video by video. It took me 45 minutes, by the way, to do this, you know? And I'm thinking, okay, we're safe now, right? So the next one, Chris, Chris you see you see what happens on the next one. Okay. Talk about this so, one right here? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, sure. by the way, this is, this is the one on the right, the screenshot on the right, is from their own website, some reasons to cancel. Your passenger makes you feel uncomfortable. If a crackhead is calling me every name in the book before they got in my car, that is making me very uncomfortable before you got in my car, let alone after you get in my car. Okay. So sorry, that's that's the reason. It's it's your policy. I cancel. And then we'll go on and on and on. I finished the cancel rehab school. And look at this one in the middle. Look at this one in the middle. Now I have a challenge from Lyft. It says I have to do 10 rides without canceling one. And there's my calendar. There's my meter where it says progress, 0% complete. So I have to do cancel rehab school and I have to do a drive challenge not to get deactivated. Otherwise, sayonara, Serge. I'm like, let's play along with this. <laughs> let's do the rehab school. I have so much time in my head anyway. And then let's, and then comes the tough part. I have to do this challenge. Without canceling 10 rides, I'm like, that's the tough nut to crack. So what I took care of that by doing, using BF and I'm just making sure that I just do a couple of shorties or 10 shorties. So that's my story. But besides that, I'm going to tell you guys a story that's dear and dear to my heart. I had a friend called. Oh, there you go. These are all the, all the you know, threats I'm getting. Ready for the test drive challenge? Let's go. I pushed the start button. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how is this? You can't even do this to an employee, bro. They'll, they'll shit, they'll find a lawyer and sue your ass, right? Welcome, and then look at my records, like, I, amazing, I'm amazing. Welcome to Cancellation Anonymous. Yeah, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I did, I finished that, Cancellation Anonymous school. And then it says, yeah, let's do the challenge. So besides that, two minutes on my friend Jay. Nothing to do with Jay Crater, who's going to show up next week on our show, by the way. 
Um, I had this friend, older friend, much older than me, grinder on the Uber platform for six years, father of two young kids. He's 72 years old. So he made a mistake, had kids that he was like 60, big problem. But that's his problem. This guy suffers from COPD. COPD is a pulmonary disease. If, you, if you're a smoker, you'll know you're not able to breathe. He takes this um, cough syrup for it, and this emanates some sort of an alcoholic smell, okay? So one day, a female passenger gets in. He had just taken his cough syrup. He's driving. He does 60, 70, 80 rides. Five-year veteran, 495 rating, right? And within 10 minutes of this passenger getting out of the car, Uber deactivated him on the spot. No recourse. This man is 72. He's done thousands of rides for you. Two kids. Not that Uber gives a shit about that. But, and he, he went to the doctor, got a report that the alcoholic smell may have been the cough syrup he had just taken. Nothing. It didn't fall. It fell to deaf ears. Nothing. Then I was pissed. I got in touch with Dara Kerr, who's a good friend, journalist of mine. And if you people know, she used to write for CNET. She's a very famous journalist. Now she's at the markup. I talked to her. And you know what? Good for her. She took on this challenge, introduced Jay to an attorney, but did a nationwide story that ran a couple of years, three years ago, right before the pandemic. Guess what? Jay is still deactivated, Uber. For what? For some cheap passenger trying to get six bucks back. Finished the guy's career. Today, he's homeless. He's still got two kids he takes care of. I don't know how he's doing it. He's probably doing it on Lyft. But this is a story near and dear to my heart that this deactivation BS has to end. This unjust deactivation. Because if Lyft can put me through this, the only reason I did not deactivate me, it's some algorithm, by the way, no human did that, is because I finished my challenge, my drive challenge to be worthy of the pink mustache. Otherwise, I'd be gone. Do they care if you're a five-year driver, 10-year driver? And you know how many thousands of stories we heard about this on RSG, right? People just are getting deactivated right and left with no cause, only by the word of a cheap passenger who wants their six bucks back. I'm done. Not with this, but I'm done with the, <laughs> with this, with this you know, garbage. Oh, by the way, on the Prop 22 that they passed with $220 million, people, there is a clause that says unjust deactivations will go to a committee. Has anyone gone to a committee yet? Any of those? Because if anybody did, Jay should have been on one of those to get reactivated. He's still not active. Uber won't even listen. So yeah, I think the only ones who have something set up is Seattle and now the rest of the rest of Washington, because they had that law that uh, was signed. I'm not sure when that actually, I don't know if that officially went into effect yet or if they're phasing it in for the whole state, but yeah, Seattle has something uh, yeah, where like people who are deactivated can uh, oh. go to the drivers. I think it's Drivers United um, and get United. it taken care of or get it looked at and helped through. Yeah, so that's the story. I mean, uh, you know, whoever is reading this um, or commenting on it, I'm sure you know, every every driver that's out there knows somebody who's been unjustly deactivated. So before our next segment, where we're going to do a little roast, uh, <laughs> you know, these unjust deactivations are nothing but weeding the best drivers or getting the best drivers out of the system. Why? I have a plan. You know why? Because the new ones don't have the scar tissue that the veterans have. We veterans know everything that has gone on the last six years. The new ones you get, they're dumb, they're ignorant, they will drive for you anyway. And that's their plan. Get rid of all the veterans and put in some fresh blood who has no scar tissue. Their memory is short. We're going to make have them make 25 bucks an hour. They think that's great. And we'll continue with the churn and burn. But these deactivations must end. So that's it. I said my piece. Yep. All right, and now, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I don't know if people bang, are familiar. I, I mean, so, so, yeah, bang. what was it, last week, two weeks ago now at this point, um, their, Uber and Lyft had their earnings call and their earnings report and all that, and they both took two completely different routes on, you know, kind of their stance on things, so we had talked about that, and just on, actually, oh, yesterday, yeah, Monday, 
uh, the Uber came out with this thing called Go Get 2022. <laughs> so if you if you were driving, what was this, four or five years ago at this point now, I think it was the oh, six I months died. of change. Uh, this is what it reminds me of, of that. It's like the oh. six months of change, but but this is not a driver related thing in any way. This is like customer based. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Yeah. So the, <laughs> oh shoot. Okay, go ahead. After after this is done, go watch another ride trick guy video. But then go and watch uh, the Uber Green Go 2022 roast oh. army video. Um, they have ten new topics or ten Ooh. new things that are coming out. So we're gonna do a quick rundown. Uh, I'm gonna say what the new topics are and. Let's play you know, the game. If we, if, <laughs> if we got to give a, a brief explanation, then we will. But if not, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we'll kind of go back and forth between. Uh, so, again, this is more consumer based versus mm -hmm. driver based, but still oh, no, not more. All. Uh, well, <laughs> one of them is not. One of them is driver based, but they're the EV hub. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, All right. So let's God. do a quick run. <laughs> And by the way, oh if you checked out that EV hub yet, it's it. Oh. Um, <laughs> All right, so here we go. First one, voice ordering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I feel like Chris Rock about to get slapped here. So let me tell you something. <laughs> voice ordering, right? If you're that lazy that you can't push a button, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And you know, how much revenue? How much revenue is that going to add to Uber's uh, couch potato list right here? I can't push <laughs> a button. I can't lift my finger to push the button to get the Chinese, but I can voice order. Hey Siri, uh, I want a, a you know I want this sub from <laughs> blah 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 blah. Oh, I don't shit. want I don't want pickle no ketchup. The, uh -huh. you know, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't use. I don't use these these platforms for food delivery at all. I go and You're pick up stupid. the food. So I already voice order. It's called I call up the company of where I'm picking the food up. I order the food with them. Oh, Usually half the time they're like, what? Uh, you you got to re-say it. So it's like, I mean, the other thing too is like, I, I understand the point of it. Like voice activation of everything is like Ooh. the next thing to go. So it only makes sense that they're doing that. But mm -hmm. in a real realistic way, like mm -hmm. if you're a person who, who orders something and you want it more tailored to you or something specific to you, mm -hmm. like I want a <laughs> when I order a pizza from my favorite pizzeria, we get double cheese, light sauce, lighter baked and cinnamon sticks on the side with an extra icing. You say that on the mat uh, on voice control, yeah. it's going to be like, what? I don't know what you just said. So yeah. I mean, no, I, there's I, probably I, going to be a huge learning <laughs> curve when it comes down to voice. I call order. that I call that incremental improvement on a business that's slowing down anyway. So there is yep. my professional opinion of it, right? Yeah. And then uh, there was one comment that I had to hit. Oh, oh, we zoom. You know, we zoom. We gotta meet if you're in LA. Shoot me an email. Uh, it says apparently Uber is delivery guys. Huh? Oh yeah, are getting replaced by robot igloos. Yes, yeah, I have we're, a video we're, we're getting to that in a minute. Oh, we're getting to that in a minute. Is that in the, in the <laughs> tent? Is that in the tent? Yeah, that's in the tent. So oh, we're getting to that in a minute. Sorry, 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 we zoom. We just prematurely, you know what? So let's go. All right. So, uh, any last last things with voice ordering? No, I said it. Okay. That was one sentence was pretty good. I, I can't do better. All right. Number two, hmm? Uber Travel. I think you know what you that know, is. That's like yeah, yeah. That's the. Okay, look, we all know DK is from Expedia, right? Right? The, the Barry Diller protege, best salesman on the planet, blah, 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 blah. And Expedia, biggest travel website, one of the biggest travel websites on the planet. So I think, you know, you know what I thought, actually, just when you just said this, it, it, it kind of feels like his Expedia model at work here, because he used to do this yep. at Expedia. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, you know Uber travel. Uh, wonderful. Uh, voice, activate my... Uh, <laughs> Vacation to a Tahiti bungalow over the water. And I go. <laughs> Here, voice ordering. <laughs> yeah, voice ordering. Uh, Uber, uh, Uber travel vacation, for me. I want it, yeah. I think, yeah. th you know, uh, from a business standpoint, that is, that's genius right there. When it can, Whoever yeah. designed Uber travel is smart because what they're doing is they're combining and looking for your travel 
and where you're going. And then they're injecting themselves into where they can. So it's like, yes. oh, you're going to be at the airport at this time. So yeah. do you want to ride there? Do you want to ride to your hotel? We we yeah. know where you're going. So it's it's one touch. All you need to do is hit confirm yep. and it's good to go. Yep. So they're injecting themselves into an easy one one use type situation yep. and that is very frictionless so you know yes, that was the whole point of, of uber when it began was a frictionless system yes that is really smart when it comes to them so uber it, honestly it, it that won't have a negative or positive impact on drivers it might actually help them get more uber rides uh because That's uber right. is just going to take out lyft from doing that by injecting themselves into that so yes. That one, I got to say, that one's actually a pretty, pretty good one. So I give a, I'll give them a thumbs up on that one from a business standpoint. Yeah, on the, yeah, uh, and even from a driver I standpoint. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. So, you know, um, you push the button, everything is taken care of for you, unless it's not, of course, but that's okay. Hey, good idea. There we go. That's the only compliment out of those 10 you're going to get. <laughs> well, next <laughs> one's Uber Charter. So is this is like where you a, can order a limo chip and Dale service. Show up or what happens? <laughs> At the, you know, maybe they'll put that into the in, into the As system soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's a great Uber, idea. Uber party for hire. <laughs> yeah, app, app. You know, an app for you know what? I mean, oh wow! I just came up with that. I think I'll just write an app. <laughs> uh, <laughs> copyright, uh, copyright pending. <laughs> yeah, it's all mine. So it's all. You know, yeah. Uber, if oh, that comes about, we, this uh, this is where yeah. you yeah. owe that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Uber, Uber uh, Charter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. Nothing. Okay. Uh, how, okay. How about we do this, Chris? We do this, or we do this, or we do that. That's neutral. Okay. Okay. So on this one, yeah, I agree. We have a practice, Uber by Charter. the way. We're like twins. We no. just did that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't even Uber. beyond this one. <laughs> All right. Uber eats at stadiums and what this essentially it's not somebody delivering the food to you from you know outside this is actually like you able to order Uber Eats in a stadium that has uh -huh. the the different food vendors, vendors within right. the stadium itself and then essentially it's just basically you put your order in when it's ready you're going to get a message and mm -hmm. then you can go get your food so they're not bringing it to you and mm -hmm. you're going to get it yeah well. thoughts no, I have no thoughts. It's bullshit. You know, <laughs> That's okay. mine right there. On your side, but so to me, it's like this is again goes back to the cash potato thing. If you're in a stadium, you want to go get your own beer. You want you don't want to push a button and then your food is ready. Then you go get it without waiting. You know, go if you're at a baseball game. Don't go between innings. You know it's bad, but you know, or a football game. Don't go on timeout for halftime or basketball game. But any other time, take thirty seconds, go get your shit, and then come back, sit down. I don't know. I'm like whatever. You know, to me, yeah. like all these 10, right? If you added all these 10, which we're going to discuss, how much revenue does this add to the system, existing system, where 52% is food delivery, 48% is ride share already, and freight is growing? Literally, that's from the last earnings report. Literally, mm -hmm. food delivery took over ride share the first time in their history of Uber, 52% and 48%. All this uh, charter bus. You know, all this, how much is this going to add to revenue to be substantial enough to for Uber to show the money to their institutions? <laughs> no, I think, like I said, I think Uber travel will, because like I said, it's yeah. injecting. Okay. So that's just Uber charter could. Okay. Um, I mean, it's it's probably going to be it's going to be like the Uber Eats of the limo world, essentially. Okay. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's not going to be something for, for you and I, when it comes to drivers or other drivers, right, unless right. you are, you know, in the business or something like okay. a fleet, fleet driver okay. or something. So I don't, one, I think that one. could potentially the Uber eats at stadiums. I, how much are they getting on top of that? Are they, are they claiming that 30%? So you're, it's well, you not getting there, right. What the driver's not getting, you're getting as a are you, maybe? but, the, but that's the whole thing. Like, are you going I mean, for me to literally order on the app to go to go walk to pick it up, how much are they going to charge just to do that? When and, and this is this is somebody who's actually at the game watching. How much yeah. more are you going to spend for an already hyperinflated price of food when you got to go to a stadium? Because you know, six dollars for for a hot dog and six dollars for a freaking soft pretzel. I mean, what is that going to be? Ten, twelve dollars or something? Yeah. And then they're going to pocket all that. So for you know. to go pick up your food, they're going to charge you money. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the only thing I could think oh, that like, there that could be is they're yeah. just trying to get their name there. Yeah. So it's like, 
it, 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 you're you're just seeing Uber and it's reinforcing in the back of the back of the mind. Like yeah. one of the things that we have in our area is, and I'm sure you probably have this too. You have, um, you know, different lawyers that you could probably sing the song or the tune to yeah, the, the time, to yeah. the thing because yeah. all they do is advertise. So they're always yeah. there. So when yeah. you're injured, you think of that lawyer or the law firm. Yep. It's kind of, I'm th I'm wondering if that's kind of going to be the same thing where they're just if trying not, to put Chris, their name is, right there. Yeah, but if it's not by now, right? There is, but there is 110 yeah. million people on the Uber platform, some sort of another eats or ride share, right? There's mm -hmm. only 350 million people in this country, and some are kids and some are elderly who are not using it, so they pretty much got whatever total addressable market that they're going to get. I yeah. understand it. I think I wouldn't do it. Would you do it if you were in a game? Would you order Uber Eats and go pick up your food? For an extra 10 bucks? No. <laughs> if it was that much, hell no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't, that, part, part of the reason why I don't order from, you know, Uber Eats or DoorDash or any of these yeah. places is because, well, one, it costs me more money yeah. and I'm cheap and I don't want to spend that extra. Yeah. But then it also eats into the restaurant's profits because Absolutely. if I go and pick it up myself, they're not being charged that advertising fee and the other fees that are associated yeah. with it. So yeah. not only are you paying more, but the restaurant is getting less. Yeah. So why would I just bypass the system entirely yeah. and go and order from the place and then pick it up yeah. or deliver from that specific place? Right. And then that way they're getting more, especially at a time where it's really hurt. I get it. Yeah, okay, sure. So, so you could say they saved the restaurants they might have, but they also, you know, capitalized on on their their profits when they're already slim margins to begin with. So yeah. um, that's my thoughts on that. But okay. uh, let's go on to the next one: vouchers for events. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're. You know, you can buy vouchers to your guests. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to add anything. On a, I mean, on a on a business standpoint, smart again. Yeah. Uh, just because you you know you're putting it out there, mm -hmm. use Uber. They already paid prepaid for Uber. You're using that. So again, yeah. they're positioning themselves to, to be in charge over Lyft. Okay. Uh, business standpoint, smart. Uh, will people dead. use it? <laughs> Lyft is so far behind on these guys. I honestly come on, DoorDash, honestly. buy them. Yeah, come on, man. It's only like okay, seven this, billion. This is the this is the big one. Autonomous delivery. Okay. And they're rolling this feature out in Santa Monica. Yes. I've basically, seen as we speak. I saw one. Um, <laughs> so here's the deal. I'm going to take this serious because Harry may be watching. <laughs> Listen, uh, I did an event with Harry called Curbivore. It's like uh, commerce moving to the curb. It was a fantastic success. Mayor of LA was there. I don't know how they scored that guy, but he was there and did a speech. There were five robot delivery companies there. One was the one that I tried to hijack, <laughs> but it went right around me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> one was called Coco. You see these little robots zipping around in Santa Monica, wonderfully judging traffic, stopping at every red light, not running on any poodle or anything like that. Pretty big box. Um, I went and spoke to a representative of Coco and pretty much to all of these robot companies because I was fascinated with it. I mean, there are these little four wheel boxes that just go to stop in front of a restaurant, restaurant opens the top, puts the food in, and then they keep driving. And then, you know, when they get to the point, they ring the person who ordered the food, they come down and open the top, they have a code on it. Unbeknownst to me, I thought they were all, by the way, autonomous. And it was, it was I have a video of it, a three minute video on Coco. I tried to block it literally on the curb in Santa Monica. <laughs> It looked at me, like not looked at me, obviously, but it kind of did this. There was a tree on the left, pothole on the right. This thing perfectly judged, went right around me, stopped at the red light, wait for the green, and kept going. I was fascinated. <laughs> I have a three-minute video. Then I'm talking to this guy. I'm thinking, these things are so smart now. They're just kind of driving around me and, you know, all these hurdles. Then I started thinking about the negatives. <laughs> I go, I'm thinking a lot of golden retrievers are going to piss on these things, okay? Because they're, 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 they're territorial, baby. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, we have a little homeless problem in Santa Monica, so I'm not sure if they, once they sniff there is food in there, a lot of these can be hijacked. However, the representative of Coco told me that they are uh, driven or, or ordered to move 
by people called pilots that mm -hmm. could be all over the world. So it's basically a PS4 or a Xbox controller in their hand, and they're driving these things. So immediately I said, my son has a future as a pilot <laughs> for Coco because he plays PS4 constantly. And to me, yeah, and don't you have to get a drone Hulu, license too? Way, yes, you have to be 18. Um, but they have thousands of people in Mexico, India, wherever they are. They're literally sitting in their homes and driving these things all over Santa Monica. How so? Drivers, beware! You're being replaced by a little pink robot. Well, that's in Coco's case, but there were other ones. There was Serve, there was uh, Tortoise. I'm trying to remember. There was Coco. There was Kiwi Bot. I mean, seriously. There were five of them. They were so cute, zipping around all over the place. Now, remember when the uh, Chris, when the scooter showed up, right? And they would be driven and dumped all over the place because that's what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do: pick it up and dump it in front of somebody's house. The cities are not ready for these <laughs> food delivery robots. There are no laws, so these things are going to get abused by a lot of four by fours. They're going to smash the shit out of these things all over the place, <laughs> and you're never going to get your food. But drivers, well, beware. They're going to replace Look at that robot. Look at that police robot in LA that they have. That thing's been assaulted. And, <laughs> you know, when real crimes are actually happening in front of it, it's like, don't well, touch me. You're, gonna, you're assaulting yeah. me. <laughs> it's yeah, like, so, but that's yeah. that's one thing to watch out. But but that raises a point, though. If if they're having these <laughs> these people autonomous, uh, it's not yeah. really autonomous. It, it might down the road. But it's, not autonomous. it's it's drone. It's essentially a drone driver uh, yeah. who is who yeah. is behind a screen yeah. and driving these things around, making sure yeah. everything's you yeah. know working and okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then getting it back to its charger when it needs all that. Yeah. 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 So you might actually be able to do the job from your house instead of going out and driving around, saving yourself some gas. So yeah, if you're good at PS4, go get a job as a pilot. Honestly, I'd love to try it out. I would well, love to. I'll, I'll, just put, you to in touch, I'll put you in touch with that guy. I'll, I'll send you his information. In awesome. Fact, yeah, I'd love son, to try it I'll out. I'll take my son to their office in Santa Monica for my son to drive it in the backyard. So, <laughs> Harry, you know, Harry if you're still watching, why don't you fly me out to LA and then... Yeah. Uh, Come on down, Chris. Come on down. <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah. So Uber, Anything Uber delivery drivers, you guys are all getting fired. You're all fired, like <laughs> Trump would say. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> very soon probably yeah, very at soon. least at least in santa monica is the test market <laughs> all right here we go next one all right next thing oh this Uber one was uh, is it this or this which one is it for autonomous it delivery yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> you'll never get your food people okay, wait wait it, it, it'll be like this uh-huh if uh, uh depending depending on how things actually roll out but okay. it'll be like this if i can actually try it and if I like it, <laughs> okay. as like a, a uh, driver I'm, who's getting I'm, paid for this, I'm sending you. And, the, the and email. do tips come to me, like on Uber Eats? If if Absolutely you get tips from this no robot, they necessary. come to me as the driver. No tipping necessary. <laughs> <laughs> no tips for you. Well, I'm not okay, wasting yeah. my gas, so you know I might. <laughs> there you go. Might as well. I would be okay with that then. Give me the go. hour. Give me an hourly wage. Twenty bucks 20 an hour. Bucks. Good. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right next, uh, one. next one. Uber oh. Comfort Electric. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> oh, this? Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. It, 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 it's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of like um, in the middle, because you you know what happened with with Is that the one with Sachin, Sachin, by the way. Was that the one with Sachin? Uh, yeah, I, think, I so. think no, I think he did the EV Hub. Oh, did he, I don't remember. Hub? I'd have to rewatch. Yeah, combine. It was a combination. Yeah, it was with Sachin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so all Uber right. Comfort Electric is gonna be good. Again, well, like there was is that this guy. What's his all? name? You remember the guy with Tesla Y? That he says he made hundred grand or whatever in LA. He's was it? Was it was a commenter. I know. Yeah, WeZoom. Yeah. So he's he's going to get comfort, right? Now is it? Isn't it? I guess. I thought you were getting know. that with the Tesla three anyway. No. That well, that that's the Uber EV, which you're getting the dollar extra. Um, oh, I, and I, I and I think okay, I think it, it's it, comfort. So so, what are they? What what are my thoughts? They're doing Uber X. There he says, I got Uber Comfort, right or Uber X and Uber Electric. Uber Comfort, Uber Comfort Electric. I mean, what? Are, uh, I, I'm assuming so that zoom. Uber Comfort. We asked WeZoom. He says, I got my first ride from LAX today. So, 
Okay. So on the Y, it was only Uber X, but now Y is Comfort as well. Is it it? Yes? No? Okay. I don't know. 20, 2085 for a 2.5 mile ride. So where'd you go? Playa del Rey? Is that where you went? Or yeah, that's the only place you could go for three miles. That's good money right there. Well, depending I'd like on how long see, you were in the I'd like to see for. the breakdown on that. Though, no, like, how much is the how, what's the pay rate versus Uber X or Uber? 10% more than Uber X, honestly, not much. Yeah, Uber but then Comfort Electric. My yeah. question is uh, the, the only thing, too, is Uber Comfort Electric mm -hmm. is probably going to be the same as Uber Comfort. The only designation is it's going to be an EV versus, you know, a regular comfort car. It's yeah. probably going to be the exact same because Uber Green and Uber X are the exact same now, they don't have yeah. any difference. Uh, so I'm assuming Uber Comfort, uh, Uber Comfort um, Electric is going to be the same, just with an electric designation. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's no, no, you're not wrong. Right but now. he says, Wisdom says they don't show the mileage price, just mm. fare. Oh shit! Did they change already? I haven't driven last Dang. couple days. Ooh. Oof. Oh really? There's no more rate card. Yeah, screw that. Yeah, and, the, and they're okay. yeah, they, they got that. <laughs> The the one dollar extra is for for electric yeah, ride, for all okay. electric rides. Next I believe. One. I, I say I say this one right there, right there. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of there, do... and it's shaky. Yeah, yeah. It's one, shaky. Out of, one out of twenty rides is comfort, so I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, I drive a 2013 Jeep Grand, Grand Cherokee. There's no yeah, way I'm right. falling so you're not getting going into that. <laughs> so, okay, next one. Next one, EV Hub. I have. This one's for more for drivers. I have to do this or this. Okay, I'll do. I'll do this. I'm being kind. I'm being very kind. I'm going, I'm going like, like this. Are you okay? This is a tilting. So thing. it's it's essentially a way for drivers to be able to look at getting an EV through the Uber platform, essentially. Yeah. So it's it's like to actually buy one, not to not to do that. So yeah. Um, okay. Next one, charging map. So this is basically the map. You know, you got the gas stations right now when you do Uber Pause. It shows you all uh -huh. the gas stations around um, uh -huh. or, you know, with, with Upside. Um, it shows and you all of them around. My wife's, my wife's Bolt has that. So does WeZoom's Tesla. Yep. I mean, okay, whatever. I don't need you. I don't need it. Thank <laughs> I you. Don't need, yeah, I don't, I need, don't it. need it. See you later. <laughs> uh, and again, they're just trying to keep it all, all yeah, yeah. in app. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Yes, yes. you know. You, you got your family. phone or maybe your tablet when you're using it versus the car itself, which is going to tell you exactly where to go. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I, I think it's redundant at this point. You know, Chris, so, by the way, this takes a lot of man hours to write this all this code. I'm serious, man. Oh. Right, this is not a joke. Right? You're not writing that code. That's, no, that's they're borrowing it from somewhere. Yeah. But no, also, you have to understand. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, what, do you think, what do you think this 10-minute video cost, Uber? <laughs> I don't mil? know. 20 mil. Easy. easy. I don't know if it would take that much. 10 mil. 10 mil. Easy. Look how many locations they had. They had all you're, you're... their top 10 executives out. You know, you have security issues. You have like, you have, you have DK in Santa Monica. That's definitely what Santa Monica <laughs> So I was like, Yeah, oh, you're, you're wow, probably. You got to close the streets down. You know, these things are expensive. They're all union workers, by the way. Why yep. didn't they hire any independent contractors for this gig? Uh -huh, <laughs> oh, you, you can't in LA. You, you can come to Buffalo you. and do that. Yeah, there you go. So, okay, next one. All right, and the final one is Uber One. So, oh, is that the subscription thing? Yep. Nine ninety nine a month. Ninety nine ninety. Thirty dollars a month. What are you talking about? Really? They lowered it. I, I thought it was. I don't know. I, I, th I think in the fine print when I was watching the video, I think it was thirty bucks a month. A month. No, yeah. it's nine ninety nine a month, ninety nine ninety nine a year. Here, let Number me. One. Yeah, take a look. We don't want to give the wrong information. I'll, I'll find this. Actual. I thought it was that, but they said they said the first month is free if you do it during this infomercial, like they sell you, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Sign up one I... month free trial and thirty dollars off your next delivery if uh, you're okay. eligible. Yeah, nine, nine, uh, yeah. Nine, nine, okay, nine so I don't know what it is. It's right there, nine ninety nine a month. I looked already. Okay. And then it gets you five percent off on regular food delivery and ride share. While I jack you so bad last six months <laughs> after the <laughs> pandemic that I jack you so much with my algorithm as a passenger that that five percent 
you're gonna get on your 9.99 i don't think it makes any difference well, but hold on hold on hold on hold on <laughs> well, I, this is this is what we got we got it we got to do this we got to try this yeah. out somebody has to have uber one yeah and somebody has to have just normal uber and order then you got to you got to order order at the same time, but you can't do it near each other because of the map knows. You got to do it like so it's a little bit further away, but close enough that it's like the same. Okay. And you got to test it. <laughs> so if if the the normal person says, "Oh, it's it's going to be twenty five dollars to go right down the street that I could walk," mm -hmm. and then you see, is Uber One going to have the exact same thing where it's twenty five dollars, but it shows you that that five percent discount where it's Oh, it's going to be normally like twenty eight ninety four. Yeah, but we're going to give you twenty five. So it's, it's the same no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see it. Know. You see that happen all the time. Absolutely. I mean, they do that Absolutely. all all over the place. Absolutely, the discounts so. you get from Uber are all factored in people, so don't fall for it. Yeah. But uh, so overall, overall, right? All these ten items, ten minute video, with all the execs out in front. No joke. Every department head was there. Um, I'm like, okay. All this, people, all the execs who did this, please, would any of these 10 be possible without something called a human driver? No. So there you Out go. of these? Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Your voice ordering now? Because you're calling from Siri or... or somebody assistant. has to bring you the food. Somebody <laughs> has to bring you the food. You get voice order. It's not coming on your iPhone. <laughs> Somebody has to go pick that up. What else? What could be done without these? You know, the stadium one, maybe. There you go. That's the one. Yeah, that would right, you have to show But again, somebody's going to have, have somebody's got to make the food, but that's already uh, happening. I'm telling you, so. <laughs> you people, need people, please stop abusing the drivers. Okay, please. Yep. Go out there and drive. Experience what we're experiencing. Maybe, maybe then you will create some loyalty. Okay. That's it. All Maybe right. Way yep. over today, bro. Oh, it's all right. You know, over. that that last uh that last little roast segment was kind oh, of Okay, fun, then so. let's do this then. Final overall on that on that video. I know we're uh, going, from, let's for... put it sideways first together. Let's put it let's put it put your put your thumb sideways. Okay, on on a count of three for the on the video, overall as a revenue or profit generator for Uber, we're gonna do two categories. So the first one is revenue. And profit generator for Uber above and beyond what they have going on now. One, two, three. Really? I think it's going to be a slight increase for them really? doing some of these things, especially like I said with Uber Travel. If you're in, if you're literally you're literally cutting out competition. We zoom. With, I agree with you. Or with Lyft, so right there yeah. you're you're positioning yourself as an app to again that frictionless thing. So it's like somebody could just be like, oh. I don't even need to worry about it. So, Lift yeah, I, I mean, there. when you're looking at these things from a business standpoint, yeah. I think some of it is going to help them. Other things are just are, aren't. And then, you know, the autonomous delivery hmm. over time, you know, again, of course, going over to time, put out drivers. So, I mean, yeah, sure, you're paying somebody per hour to to drive the thing, but you're also, I think, driving a few at a time. You're not driving yeah. just one. Can so, you know, now article? now you're changing it. So. Yeah, I think overall those those few options probably are going to help them a but little bit Chris, more. But maybe I don't think you understood. Okay, so Uber sales revenues last year were like forty billion, right? Billion with a B. All yep. these ten are they going to push it to forty four billion? You think ten percent maybe? No, that's yeah, why it wasn't. I, I mean, down. I th I think yeah, I think they could. Yeah, okay. absolutely. What time remain? So. <laughs> uh, it, nobody believed it because stock went down again yesterday. So let's <laughs> let's <laughs> let's, let's uh, nobody's buying what they're selling, uh, but that's okay. So and the next one is even their stock. Yeah, even their <laughs> stock is not buying it. So and the last thumbs up and down we should do is when do you think Uber and Lyft executives are going to admit that they need drivers? forever when are they going to admit yeah, how when, is this when, up or down know, okay. are they going to admit that they're going to need drivers forever oh yeah forever. i think you're gonna have to yeah yeah they, they will and lastly will they show them the money no <laughs> that's a big yeah. <laughs> that's a big exactly right all right so uh you know what this was so much fun
I mean, I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hate I hate to, to laugh at a lot of this, but man, they spent all this time and money to do this video. Not one mention of the drivers. By the way, drivers, this is why we're doing this for. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that goes to show how how delusional they are and how you know disrespecting of the driver community they are because there's. If you spend 10 million and put a 10 freaking hour, I mean, 10 minute video together, maybe one of you could mention, or DK maybe, even if it's a lie, which we would not lie, but, you know, thank you to our driver community who is going to make all this possible at the moment. No, what they do, they go show that little drone or food box that says, hey, hey, this is a threat. You're all being replaced with this thing. I'm like, okay. Right. Well, yeah, because again, they want to have the consumer base, but they also want to appease stockholders. Which, well, no. they're stock. They're stock. What did it actually? What did, before we we sign off? Because there's a couple more things to go. Change. Oh yeah, yeah. That's you have today. To, yeah, yeah. Twenty three and change. Yeah. Yeah. So it did go up today. A little bit. Yeah, market went up. Yeah, it went up. It went up two point five, two point six percent. <clears throat> wonderful but but oh, i mean yesterday it, it i mean it's kind of been flat so yeah so you all have right well yeah. to talk about for next week <laughs> all right yeah so thank you for uh hanging out everybody and uh if you haven't hit that subscribe button make sure you do ring the bell for notifications we're doing this tuesday 6 p.m eastern standard time 3 p.m pacific next week we have a special guest coming on jay crater uh so yes. jay has his uh part or is uh, his video coming out tomorrow? A lot of people have been asking for this when it comes to, you know, his plan B becoming his plan A video. Uh, so make sure you stick around for that tomorrow uh, and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications if you're not already. Uh, we will have him on next week. So that'll be a lot of fun talking with Jay. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it was a great then, time, Sergio. Can, can we uh, nickname Jay Thailand Jay? <laughs> I don't know. Bangkok. We'll have to ask Bangkok. him. We'll have to ask Bangkok him next week. Bangkok, Jay. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. There you yeah, go. The guy, the guy did a video. Got like a ten thousand views. He says, oh, "I'm back. I'm back." Oh, by the way, I drove three hours, hurt my back. I'm like, "Yeah, you're used to be sipping champagne at the beach in Thailand, of course. What the heck, bro?" That's where but, I'd be if I could too. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna. Holy oh. crap! We zoom. Oh, we wow. zoom. You waited. Okay. You know what? We're definitely going to lunch. Okay. You need to shoot me an email, bro. Hey. Oh wow. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Okay, yeah. Sergio at the rideshare like rideshareguy.com. Shoot me an email. I'm gonna catch you on your Tesla Y. Um, by and the then, way, uh, I have yeah. a photo shoot next week with Bloomberg. Oh nice. Yeah. So they're doing an article on like what? <laughs> Bloomberg. I'm like well let wow. them know about the show me the money club and let oh, drivers oh, she, be able she, to Jackie already knows. Yeah, Jackie the volunteer okay. is gonna read the she already knows. I'm like, we zoom, email me, please. Okay, <laughs> at least you can give me a ride in your Y, bro. Is it dual motor? Is it? Can we go just flying a little bit? Okay. Ooh, that'd be fun. Yeah, you bet you. All right, people. You got you got to take some GoPro footage of that. Love you, but, people. All right, we will see you guys next week. Coming with Jay, uh, so make sure you yeah. stay tuned to that and all of our awesome, great content that will be coming out over the next week and you know into the future as well. Yes, sir. Thumbs up, subscribe. Much love from LA. See you next week. All right, see. Bye. See you guys. And th thanks again, WeZoom, for the super chat. That was mighty yes, generous of you. Thank you, sir.